Oh, hey, y'all. Welcome to Wake the Fuck Up Wednesday. Hello. Whew. It has been the week. It seems like there's been a couple of weeks like that. <laughs> anyway, I hope that you all are making it. Today is the hump day, right? So we can do this. We can totally do this together. That's why we have these on a Wednesday. I might move these a little later because some of y'all, I think it's just like a little bit too um, early. <laughs> anyway, okay. I don't see me in the Facebook group live, am I? Oh, I am. Okay, good. Because I was like, oh, it's not showing up, but there's that delay. Okay, so what are we going to talk about today? We're going to talk about anger. Arr, I put anger, right? And so I... Oh, hey, Carl, what's up? Um, so I want to talk about anger because it's like one of my things. I'm really good at it. <laughs> so I feel like anger is one of those things that just hooks us, right? And then we just take off to the races. And I don't know if everybody feels that way about anger, but I know for me, I grew up in a pretty volatile uh, household. Like my mama, she was, um, on fire a lot. And, you know, she, I think she was dealing with a lot. Sorry, my hair is like just freshly washed here. Um, you know, she was an immigrant to a new country. We were in a very poor neighborhood, like in the ghetto. And my dad had schizoaffective disorder. So he just caused a whole bunch of chaos. Um, you know, innocently, but, <laughs> and she was just maxed out. And there was lots of times where she would rage. She was also in World War II. She had me when she was older. She was in World War II as a kid, a lot of held trauma there. So, you know, one of the things I just want to point out is we, we come to a relationship with wounds, right? with pre-existing wounds from our culture, with pre-existing wounds from um, our own history and our own experience. So there's a story that you'll hear in the podcast tomorrow, but I just want to share it here. So, you know, there's this group of porcupines and it's a fable. There wasn't actually this group of porcupines that did this. Okay. So there's this group of porcupines and it's like freezing winter, right? And they're like, we need to get together and huddle up to survive this crazy ass winter. And so they do, they cuddle up together, but their quills are like poking each other. And they're like, you know what, fuck this. Like, this is so uncomfortable and I'm out of here. So then they like disperse and they're like, I don't want the pain, I don't wanna deal with your quills, right? They leave and they start dying because it's like the coldest winter ever. And so they start thinking, you know, maybe we should try this huddle thing again. So they come back together and they huddle up and that is how they survive. Even though they're getting poked, even though it's uncomfortable, they need each other to survive. And that's sort of like the human situation, right? <laughs> it's like, you, you know, I almost became a nun I know, I know. You're like, you a nun? But yes, because I was like so into the idea of dedicating myself to spiritual practice. I was like, this is awesome. But, you know, I really knew that for me, the tests, what's hard is in relationship, right? In my intimate relationships, that's where my shit gets triggered. Like, I'm pretty good, like, whatever shit happens, you know, professionally or whatever, and I can deal with it. But man, like, you give me some, you know, drama in a interpersonal relationship, that's where my work is hardest to do. And that's actually the truth for many of us. So, you know, in my opinion, it was easier if I could just like remove all the people that annoyed me in my life, right? Like my family and my relationships, which is possible when you uh, become a nun. <laughs> You're like, see, I'm going to go um, move to this monastery in the Himalayas, right? So, oh, hey, y'all, go ahead and send me some love. Send, let me know you're here. Um, type your name in, say what's up, just so that I know who's here. I would love to see that. 
Okay, so here we are as humans, we are here hurting each other with our pre-existing wounds. Those are like the quills of the porcupine in the story I told, if y'all if are just showing up. Um, so it's like, we have these wounds and yet we show up in relationship wanting to be close, but then we get so easily triggered. And that's just part of the human condition, okay? So what do we do when we get triggered, right? Because like, what is anger? Like, what is anger and is it useful and should we hide it? And so many of us are like, you know, oh, anger's bad and I should meditate and be kind and not feel it. And if I feel anger, there's something wrong with me. And, you know, the Dalai Lama said, I remember he was asked, like, when you think about the situation in Tibet, do you ever get angry? And he's like, of course, but it passes more quickly now with my practice. And I see the source of the anger. It's not what's happening in Tibet. It's my thoughts about it, my wishing things were different, my attachment to wanting things to be different that is bringing that up, right? I'm paraphrasing there, he said it differently. But, you know, so it's not that we're not supposed to feel anger, right? Anger is actually good information. Anger is telling us you're not getting a need met, whether it's for safety, whether it's for connection, whether it's um, sleep, food, I mean, we can go basic here at first, right? There's the halt. Like, are you hungry? Are you angry? Are you lonely or are you tired? <laughs> like those things can often cause us to lash out, right? And then at anger is one of them. So like at the root of that, what is it you need? So if you're not hungry or tired or lonely, what else is going on? And sometimes it's like, I just need them to listen to me. I just need them to pick the shit up off the floor. I just need them to stop bothering me or whatever, right? But the thing is, it's usually something deeper than that. It's not about the socks on the floor. It's not about the laundry. It's not about all that other shit, right? It's actually about a deeper need, like to feel heard or respected. So when we get angry, we have to ask ourselves, ah, so I have some anger here. What is it trying to tell me, right? I just had like a blowout with my husband the other night <laughs> and I was like so pissed. And um, I think we were like watching something and I was trying to be like, hey, and like interactive and like, let's connect. And he was just like kind of flat affect. And I was like, what the fuck, dude? Like we hardly get any time to hang out and you're like, meh. And I got so angry, you know? And he's like, why are you picking a fight with me? And I'm like, I'm not picking a fight. <laughs> well, I think I was. So I think it was because, right? And I told him this, I said, I, when I calmed down, when you withdrew and you weren't responding to me in the way <laughs> that I thought you should, I felt um, underneath the anger, right? I felt sad because I need to feel connection with you right now. So this is how we can communicate our anger. And I'll go a little bit more into that. So, I mean, but I didn't get to that y'all until like a whole bunch of back and forth anger, right? And it's so interesting because when you meditate, you can start to see yourself like doing it. It's almost like you're just watching on a movie screen. And I was like, oh, oh, there you go. Oh, girl, back up, back up. And I just like, didn't care. <laughs> I just like let it rip. And, you know, is he listening at that time? No. Are your kids listening when you're like, rah, rah. no, they're just like, shit, mom's pissed. Let's like, get the fuck out of here. What does she want us to do? Let's just do it and then leave. They're not listening. Right. Um, there's another great story I share in the podcast about um, a master and their disciple. And they ask like, why do people yell? 
right? Why do people argue? Why do when they get angry? And you know, the disciple had no good answer. And the master says, well, because of the distance between their hearts. Because of that distance, their voices have to be louder to cover the ground. And then why do people who are in love, like do people who are in love yell at each other? No, like their hearts are so close when they're feeling in love that they um, whisper, they talk softly to each other. And what creates that distance, y'all? What creates that distance is that unmet need. And also wanting the other person to meet that unmet need. So I want to focus on how to communicate our anger and then the unmet needs part today. And you can have a listen to the podcast tomorrow when it drops, okay? So we have our rise up and welling of energy, right? Anger is useful. We don't need to suppress it from happening. We need to, when it arises, do something useful with it, right? So it arises and we say, mm, okay, what is going on here? So we can pause, which is more likely to happen when you have a good mindfulness practice, like in Freedom School, we are talking all about mindfulness and meditation this month. We're doing like a 28-day spiritual cleanse. It's awesome. Because, you know, when you're doing your thought work, when you're learning to manage your mind, having a meditation practice is so helpful because it creates that pause between receiving the information and reacting, creates it and helps it be a little bit longer and you can be more aware of it right? So there's more time between someone pissing you off and you reacting to it. You have that millisecond, which can make a huge difference. There's um, a concept called the magic quarter second. And there's actually a book I by that name. I think I'm really bad at names. I'm sorry to whoever wrote that book, but um, it's called the magic quarter second. And it is like in terms of neurobiology, that is the length of time we have between the perception and the reaction. So the perception of someone saying something to you and then you deciding what you're going to make that mean and how you're going to react. So what I said there was really important. What are you going to make that mean? Okay. What are you going to make that mean in terms of whatever's happening is neutral. Whatever's pissing you off is actually neutral, okay? Like when someone's yelling at you, you can be like, no, this is fucked up. Like I have the right to be mad right now. This is legit, right? Or you can, in that magic quarter second, choose how you wanna perceive it. You can choose to perceive it with more compassion and say, hey, that person's really losing their shit. I wonder what they need. Because you have an understanding of anger. Like there's a deeper need going on there. Like when I'm in my good place, like when I've been meditating, when I've been getting good sleep and eating well and exercising and nothing else is stressing me out. When people do crazy shit that would normally piss me off, I'm like, whatever. It doesn't upset me as much, right? But that's not usually where we're at. So it's important to rely on the wisdom, right? We have to have wisdom and compassion together. You know, there are some people that are just such like soft hearts and they just like, oh, okay. And I'll just let go of everything. And I compassion, compassion, compassion. But then there's not the wisdom there for like, wait a minute, like, what does this mean? And what is the wisest action to take? Right? So we need both of those. Now, when something is a trigger for you, you can take that wisdom of, I can interpret this how I want. And when you get angry, you can say, why am I choosing to feel this anger right now? Right? So for those of you that are on right now, if you're um, on the Zoom, you can type in the chat box. Or if you're on Facebook, you can um, go ahead and type in the comments. But like, what are some of your triggers? 
for anger. Like for me, it's um, feeling abandoned. That's a big one. Like, you know, when when my kiddo was little and I was home a lot because my husband was gone paragliding. Um, and I just felt like, what the fuck? I'm like here by myself. Yeah. And Melinda says lying. Oh yeah. That's a big one. Mm -hmm. Fortunately, my husband is like that. Like he's really good at not lying. <laughs> he's a, he's actually, actually he's a horrible liar. <laughs> I don't, I mean, he hasn't tried to lie to me, but like when we were like in Africa, like crossing borders and stuff and like, maybe we had some weed on us crossing a border. I was like, give that to me because you are going to get us busted. Right. <laughs> I was just like, okay, I'm, I'm the one who's good at this. Yeah. So lying, what else? Oh, passive aggressive for sure. Like feeling that, like seeing passive aggressive behavior, that is one of my pet peeves too. Cause I'm just like, I mean, it's so funny. It's like their passive aggressive anger pisses me off. I'm just like, if you're upset about something, just fucking tell me, just say something about it, right? Ah, uh, okay. All right, yeah. So you have the trigger and then you can say, I actually can choose how to respond to this. And then you create that pause, right? And you can introspect, like, what do I need right now? Why is this so triggering to me? What do I need here? And find that deeper reason. It's not what you think it is on the outside. It's not the, oh, I need more money or I need them to change, right? When we put our emotional well being, dependent on someone else changing, we're fucked because we can't control how other people behave or what they think or how they think, right? We simply can't. So we really need to keep that in mind when we are wanting something to make us feel better. And that I'm gonna go into in a little bit of when it comes to um, meeting our needs. So first, you introspect, ask for what you need. Now we can use nonviolent communication. That's one tool. Um, it's been studied a lot. It works well. You don't have to use it though, but um, like there's other ways to do it. But the general format, I sort of gave you an example. You say like when blank happened, right? I like to not, I like if it's possible, I like to try to leave the word you out of it. Um, but sometimes it just sounds weird if you try not to say you. <laughs> because with the minute you say you did something, people already have a little bit of defensiveness. So the concept between nonviolent communication really is, because we can be quite violent with our words. I think Dan Daniela Port said, words are arrows, take aim. So it's so important how we use our language. I mean, whoo, I can like, I can do some damage with language, right? Like if I'm in an argument, I'm like so quick with my thinking, I can really let it rip. So you really have to understand the power of that, rein it in and come from a place of more objectivity when you say what happens. So like not when you betrayed me or not when you deceived me, but it's like, you know, in, in the lying example, it could be like when you said this, but this was the truth, Right. So like, you know, trying to make it delivered in a less violent way. I felt blank. And that's usually the feeling below the anger. OK, so like what was the feeling below the anger? Often it's grief. Often it is um, fear. Right. Um, feeling unworthy, right? Because I need blank. What is that deeper need that you want? You want connection. You want um, to feel safe. You want to feel loved. See the gentleness that comes not just what the other person might be perceiving as, but your gentleness towards yourself. It's like this deeper understanding of yourself that is more, in my opinion, more compassionate towards yourself than just fucking raging, right? 
Because when you say, that was hard, what is it that you were needing right then? You know, and in my case, it was like, I wanted to feel connected to my husband, right? And so, like, then there's this like, oh, that, that, that is what was going on, really. Not what feels like is going on, which is like, pissing you off, right? Oh, I'm feeling like he's not listening or doesn't love me or doesn't care. Like, that's not what it is. It's the need to feel connection or the need to feel safe or the need to feel worthy, right? Okay. So that's some basic ways that you can present your feelings. And I also suggest that you not automatically go there with all your feelings, right? Like, in, in terms of, let me share this with you. Really think about if you're upset about something, is it helpful, right? Is it going to help you or the other person? Not just like venting, right? That doesn't have to happen to that person. But like, is communicating this helpful? Will it bring you closer, right? If you're able to communicate it in this nonviolent way, will it help... Um, solve a problem? Will it help make the world a better place, right? So really think about that. Now, I really want to talk about the next level shit, which is emotional adulthood and taking responsibility, right? So basically, you know, it's related to what I mentioned earlier, but, you know, when we're a kid, our brains aren't that developed. When something, when A happens, we see B consequence and we go, A caused B. Like, uh, mom didn't give me what I wanted, so I'm going to be pissed. Mom is the cause of me being pissed, right? I'm going to throw a tantrum. Um, but emotional adulthood, which frankly, many people don't reach, emotional adulthood is realizing that our internal emotional experience is 100% our responsibility. You know, when, when we think about enlightenment, you know, it seems like this magical thing that happens, like you sit under a Bodhi tree for long enough, you tune things out long enough, you're going to like transcend some serious shit. But on a practical level, to me, Right, there's like an ultimate reality and a relative reality here. Like, there's the ultimate reality of like what exists, like is there a self and all that stuff. But then there's the relative reality while we're in this body, right? We're in this body, we live on this planet, we have other humans around us, other beings. Like, to me, what enlightenment looks like in that plane of reality is I create my emotional experience. It's not what's outside there. What's outside there is empty of inherent existence, empty of inherent characteristics of good or bad, like Hamlet said, right? Um, like in Shakespeare wrote that Hamlet said, basically like nothing is either good or bad, but thinking makes it so. I mean, this is like, this is wisdom that has been passed through like millennia, right? That is, I believe, part of, enlightenment is realizing that we can affect our emotional state based on our ability to train our mind. And then whatever's happening out there, which we have no control of, doesn't need to cause us suffering. Like this is when my like, one of my main teachers, Geshe Sultram Gelsen said, like, you can be happy just like that. You know, that's what they mean. Not like everything's fucking roses. Although I have heard some like very accomplished teachers say like, yeah, I can walk around and see fucking flowers everywhere and shit because they, they know they can create their experience with their mind, right? But on a practical level, it's like, you don't have to make that a problem. You know, Shanti Deva said, if you can change something, why be unhappy? If you cannot change something, why be unhappy? Why? Why choose the perspective that causes you suffering? Right? Same with anger. 
Now, often we lose our shit when one of our basic needs isn't getting met, okay? It's like, but I don't feel safe. So this feels imperative that I lose my shit, right? Our porcupine quills, our um, defense mechanisms, right? Our uh, vulnerability. We arrive with certain wounds, right? We are, I arrive with, you know, some abandonment issues. That then the quills poke me and I'm like, fuck this, I'm out of here, right? And so we arrive with our core vulnerabilities. We get hurt by human beings and other things like around us, right? But we, when we take 100% emotional responsibility for our experience, we are now in a place of power, right? We think we're in a place of power when we get angry and we yell and we make our demands. But the crazy thing is that pretty much doesn't work, right? Maybe people walk on eggshells around you. I mean, who wants that? that's not truly controlling them, right? They are gonna have this resentment inside. So one of the main things I want you to leave today's Wake the Fuck Up Wednesday with is the concept that you meet your own needs. And I know, I, I hear you, I hear you. You know, I'm like, I remember when my kid was like two, like I didn't really get like a maternity leave or anything like that. Like I had to, I worked all the way up until, and then I started working pretty quickly after and, you know, was working even on my maternity leave online and stuff. And I remember like at one point I was just like um, getting coached on that because a good coach is always getting coached themselves, y'all. So you coaches out there, if you're not getting coached, you best be getting coached. But I was, you know, being told the same thing, like, well, that's a story you can tell where you're the victim and blah, 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 or you can have the story that you're a total badass, right? That you're able to do all this. And I was like, I don't want that badass story. <laughs> you would think I would, right? It's like, yeah, why not choose the version of the story where you're the badass? But I tell you why, because I was like, so having this desire for someone to take care of me for once. I was like, fuck, I have been doing this shit for so long. Will someone just like take care of me? Not even for like a year. A year would be awesome. But like just like three months, can someone just like, please just pamper me for like three fucking months. I would love that. I would love to not have to work and just like chill, just like for a minute, right? Where does that get you? nowhere and you're full of resentment and being pissed and all that kind of stuff right so instead what we can do is say how can i meet that need myself and then it was like okay i guess i can hire a nanny i guess i can like order food out like i i want to eat good food i don't have the time but i guess i'll have good food delivered, right? Like, and it's all this shit that I didn't feel like I should have to do because I had a partner, right? I was just like, oh, if I have a partner, I shouldn't have to like pay for someone to help me. <laughs> That's my partner's job, right? But it was like, hey, if you're going to stay with this dude who's awesome in like so many other ways, like let's work on getting happy here, girl. What do you need? And I was like, I need fucking rest. I need exercise. I need good food. Oh my gosh. And it was like, when I just let go of the fact that someone else had to do that in terms of, you know, giving it to me. And I was just like, I'm just going to make this happen for myself then. Then, then the power is back with me and I'm getting what I need. I'm just like, I'm going to go to bed at nine o'clock, I guess, and wake up at five so that I can get in a run before the kid wakes up. I'm going to have food delivered once or twice a day, 
it's fucking expensive, but okay, I guess this is going to prevent a bunch of fights, right? I'm going to hire someone who can do reliable childcare. So every day I didn't have to have an argument about when are you coming back from paragliding, yada, yada, right? That was like many arguments every day about schedules. And it was like, let's just, let's just do this. And I was happier. And isn't that the fucking point, y'all? Isn't that the point is to feel better? Okay, so anger, we arrive with our wounds. Triggers, they happen. You're going to get poked, right? Maybe in really tender spots. And that can be devastating sometimes, for sure. Then we can pause and ask ourselves, what do I really need here? Where is this anger coming from? Anger is helpful and useful, and I don't need to not feel it. I just need to feel it and let it be a message to me that I have a need that's not getting met. And then I'm going to ask myself, what is that need? And then I can share it. When this happened, I felt sad because I needed connection or I needed to feel safe or I'm just tired, right? And so... From there, we can make a request. I would like to ask that, could you, could you at least try to be around like twice a week for dinner? Or can you please, before you go to bed, really make an effort to clean up the kitchen because it just makes my whole day better when I wake up and it looks okay or something. Right? You can make requests, but then you leave it at that. You step back right? You leave it at that, step back. Now it is all you. Now, do I want, do I, is the kitchen being cleaned so fucking important to me? Is it? Well, then I'll do it. We get to choose what's important to us. It's not like it's a fact, like clean kitchens are the shizzle, right? I mean, some people could give a rat's ass. So if that's important to you, own that it's important to you and it doesn't have to be important to someone else. That is freeing. I mean, even feel the emotional energy. Like when we want to change someone, it's like we're like a little tantrum, like a little toddler, like I want this. And if I make enough noise, you're going to give it to me, right? And a good parent is like, no, that's not how you get what you want. Similarly, your higher self, your wisdom within you knows that that's not how you get what you want. You get what you want by training your mind to be able to see things as neutral, being able to choose the story you want to create around that thing, and owning. Now, I'm not saying you don't have to be angry. Like, you can still choose anger. After all this, you can be like, no, I want to choose anger. I have this happen with clients all the time because they're like, I've spent so much time with people walking over me, feeling like um, weak. Anger feels good to me. Anger feels empowering. Okay, just like your reasons. Okay, own it. Like, no, I want to feel angry because it puts me in a place of more power right now. And that's what I need, right? At least you're aware that you're choosing it. And you're not like blaming the other person for feeling that way. You are recognizing that you choose anger. You create it. It feels better, right? And inevitably, after people hang out in anger for a while, they're like, okay, that's getting kind of old. I'm ready to move on, ready to move on to love, ready to move on to compassion or whatever. So the point isn't to feel happy, which, you know, is awesome, but it's also not practical to think you're going to feel happy all the time. The point, the ultimate point is to understand that you create your inner experience with the thoughts you choose to have which is another way of saying the story you choose to tell about the shit that's happening in your life. And you can be really careful about the phrasing, shit that's not happening to you, but for you, or just things that are happening, right? 
there's been so many studies of like how mindset gets passed on from the primary caregiver to a child, for example. Like, you know, if the mother is like, or the father or the whoever is like backing up and maybe hits like a grocery cart in the parking lot, right? And they say like, oh, why does this shit always happen to me? That's a mindset being taught to a kid versus, oh, well, that's interesting. Getting out, moving it, fixing it. Oh, I'm glad I saw that. <laughs> I'm glad someone else, like, I'm glad I didn't hit a person, right? There's like so many different ways to look at a situation. And you will hear me talk about self-compassion every fucking time because it's so important. Because when we have resistance to this, like, no, 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 everything was fucked up. I was like fucking abused and all that. Like, like me, like I was abused. I had, you know, so many areas of being a victim of, you know, uh, growing up in a violent neighborhood, um, sexual assault. Like I've been there. I hear you. If you are resisting the idea about your emotional experience being owned by you, often you first need to have that self-compassion to recognize that you are suffering. Anger is a form of suffering, y'all. That is such a deep lesson that I learned where I was like, I saw anger as this thing. And when I started to see it as like, oh, <laughs> I'm suffering. I remember when a teacher first told me that, first acknowledge that you're suffering. It was like, oh, you know, I could open up to not just myself, but to the world because I was acknowledging that that's what was going on, that I was suffering. Thich Nhat Hanh says um, this, so if you go to the podcast tomorrow, I'm gonna link to this beautiful story he shares, you know, but, but he says like, you know, a way couples can talk to each other is to say, um, I am suffering and I need your help, right? Oh, I mean, just like, even think of that, like, I, it can make me cry just thinking of like, what if people did that? What if people like said, I am suffering and I need help. It's like, wow, what a different world, right? So you can also acknowledge to yourself that you're suffering and give yourself self-compassion. You know, the studies show when you hug yourself, when you give yourself soothing touch, when you put your hand on your heart, we have receptors there that when they feel warmth, you release oxytocin, the same thing that gets released when your like, caregiver hugged you. When, when, you um, when you feel love from a friend, that same oxytocin is released when you do it with yourself. So it works, okay? Yet like next level shit about how you can give yourself what you need. Because yes, humans, we're social beings, we need that connection, but we can't control other people. So we need to start learning these tools to give ourselves what we need, right? So ask yourself what you need, then ask yourself, how can I give this to myself? If I want connection, I should call a good girlfriend. If, if I want um, to feel rest, I can really prioritize my schedule so that I get that and not need to wait for someone else to help me to get it. Like, how can you give it to yourself? And often, often, one of the things that can help the most is just changing our perspective, changing the story we're telling ourselves about what is actually going on. That's one of the most powerful things you can do. It's one of the things that we really focus on in Freedom School, which by the way, Freedom School's opening up for enrollment next week. So if you want to get on the wait list, go to joinfreedomschool.com. But before I go, I want to tell y'all to go to howtofeelbetterchallenge.com and sign up because next week I'm having three days where we go live here in the Facebook group and you receive challenges for three days straight to help you feel better because I know that y'all are over it. <laughs> y'all are over it and need to feel better. So let's 
do that, okay? I always talk about how life is like, you know, 50-ish, 50-ish, feeling good, feeling shitty. But I know y'alls are not in the 50-50 right now. Y'alls are in like the 80-20, but on the like overwhelm and shit like that. So how to feel better challenge.com. You can go ahead and sign up there. I'll put the link in later, but it's going to happen Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday of next week. Okay. So freedom schools opening. I'm so excited to get some of y'all in there and we deep dive into this stuff and have our challenge next week, how to feel better challenge.com. I'm super excited. It's going to be so much fun. And I promise it's simple. Like, you, you know, um, at the university I teach at, they were like, for parents that need extra support, come and join our Zoom call. And I'm like, the last fucking thing I need is another Zoom call, y'all. No, this is not what parents with children need. Mm -mm, sorry. So I know you're overwhelmed. So the things that I'm going to teach are going to be quick and simple and you are going to feel better. No shit. No money. No, hardly any time, not much energy. These things are going to help you. Okay. So I will see you in the challenge. I will see you next week. Lots of love. You're welcome, Melinda. All right. You all take care. Bye.